Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here, and uh, we're going to continue on with our World's One playthrough. Um, as you saw in the last couple of episodes, we were doing our sub uh, submissions, if you will, our secondary missions, and we got pretty much all of them uh, knocked out. Like I said before, I am not going to worry about doing a uh, uh, the Planet in Distress one. I have covered that on multiple levels, and it's such a long, drawn out. Uh, play through on that. We're just going to leave that alone on this particular play. Because uh, we know Worlds 2 is going to be coming out soon, so we don't really want to mess with that. Uh, base Computer Archives is just going to continue on and on and on. You never really truly complete that because it gets to 99.8%, like, and then it's just a, a repetitive uh, mission after that. So uh, no reason to continue that for now. You're pretty much done with that. Surveying has to do with something I've just installed in my... In my uh, Advisor, I guess we can just get get that knocked out real quick uh, and call it a day. Let me just go ahead and do that real quick. I'll even do it with you here right now. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a fancier look, and we're going with the red and black theme on the uh, character now to match our new ship. Yes, and I called it the fire delivery device, so, you know, I just thought that'd be kind of funny. But, yes, it's our new ship that we got in our previous episodes. As you can see, is a new sweep wing. Uh really love the look of this ship this is really really nice looking and it doesn't even have the uh, truck trailer in the back which is i think funny as heck when they do that but anyway that is our new ship so we now match the ship that we have here mostly black a little bit of white trimming and mostly red trimming that it has on here for certain uh, parts of it so i thought that was really really neat anyway so we want to just do the surveying real quick so i am going to <coughs> excuse me i shouldn't have done that I wasn't trying to shoot anything. I need to switch over to... So as you look through your viewfinder, if you have your survey scope involved, in keyboard terms, you can just use your 1 and 3 to scan to switch through to different types of views. So we're in analysis mode. That's your default mode. Uh, you can look for gas, mineral, and power. Now it wants us to look for power, and as you can see, Obviously, there's no, there's no uh, nearby hotspots. It uh, never can find a decent hotspot when you're in, uh, when you want one. It's always finding one like in the middle of the ocean or something like that where you really can't use it, or you want to produce an ocean uh, underwater uh, unit. It'll only find it on land then. You know, one of those things, a good old Murphy's Law type thing. So you have to go quite a distance away in order to find things. Watch out for these guys' tails; they'll, they'll slap you around. I'm kidding; they won't touch you. Okay, let's go up here. Very nice planet, isn't it? Run forever here. Love the grass renditions. I've adjusted the graphic settings on this. It won't be as high. Uh, I wanted a little more smoother transition for things and less... Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't call it glitchiness. I would guess we would just call it uh, the... Ah, good. We just found something. Finally, over this way. All right. We'll use that. It's just, uh, it's, while my computer and my graphics card can handle it, especially during streams, it gets to be a little bit of a problem. So, all right, right about there. We're about 200 units away. Really wish why they choose units over everything. Why don't they say, you know, meters or something? Wouldn't it be easier? Okay, we're about 100 away now. Sure, most of you have already done this, but for those who are new to the game, this particular hotspot is an electromagnetic hotspot, and you can put a... Oh, it's an S-Class. Good grief. Let's get rid of that plant. I don't feel like walking into it right now. All right. Uh, it's very rare to find an S-Class electromagnetic hotspot, so we'll show you about that in just a moment. So it's right here. Once you're within five, you can analyze it. And you have to get the full analysis done. There we go. Analysis complete. 97%. And if you get closer to it, you see how it goes up a little bit. If you can lock in, sometimes you can get yourself into a 100% or even 99%. Really, at that level, there it is. 99. There's where we are. 98. 99. 98. Okay, I doubt we're going to get into the 100. Oh my gosh, really? Look at that. Look at that. 100% local field strength right here, right where we're standing. 
So what you would do is you would lay down a electromagnetic power source here and it'll provide a ton of power to your base and it's constant. Day, night, doesn't make a difference. You don't have to worry about solar panels. Rarely do you even have to worry about a battery. Usually I put a battery in place, only one, in order to govern uh, or be able to check to see how much power you got coming in, how much power is available, whether you need to create another uh, electromagnetic uh, unit or not in order to keep this going. So this would be a fantastic spot to build a base or at least one nearby. So I am going to mark it probably with, what do you think? I think a save beacon for now will be more than good enough. But I want to put down, yeah, I'm going to do a save beacon. I don't have too many of those, those in the system here. Uh, I need two metal plates for that. Let me just go ahead and do that real quick. Very, very worthwhile doing this. Save, 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 right there. Okay. And there we go. So I'm going to leave that here for a future reference because I may want to, I may want to keep the save. I don't know yet. I've really been enjoying this and it's been a good one, if you will. What's he doing? Scratching his back on the ground? Weird. I don't think those guys did that kind of thing. Uh, let's get on top of the rock. There we go. Some big animals on this planet, I tell you what. So that should complete that. So we are back over to 1616. So that particular mission is gone from our log, as you can see. So another one taken care of. We're done with that. It only took us a few minutes. All right, let's get back to our ship. Yes, I could call it in, but it gives me an opportunity to talk. There we go. You know what? We're not really that terribly far. We could build the units and find a way to expand our base out this way and grab the power from it. I think that would work. I'll have to look into it, probably in between episodes, and I'll show it to you later. Okay, the plants were bothering me. Okay, so we're back. So our next objective, it says here, is to locate, uh, speak to Null about the secrets of the past. We've got to locate and activate a hollow terminus. It already found one over there, but it's off planet. Let me just see if it'll find another one for us. I'm just curious. I don't think it will. Yeah, I didn't think so. It wants to go to the other planet. That's fine. That's fine. So we'll get out into space for a moment. This ship is very fast, by the way. Um, to give you a rough idea. I mean, in space it's going to be faster, but on planet this thing does well over 400. So it's been a really nice ship. And you can see I've even added my bob. So we're good there. I went ahead and upgraded it as far as I care to at this time. So if you want to take a look, see, I've got pretty much a solid level of cargo space and that. You keep things grouped together because they tend to uh, boost each other, if you will, when you do that. But I think we've gone over that in, in the No Man's Sky 101 videos. Okay, so we're coming up on the hollow terminus, and, oh, it's an approximate location. I'll do a quick scan to get an idea. Now, supposedly, we got an archive too. Uh, yep, that's it. Uh, supposedly, No Man's Sky came out with a patch. Pardon me, Hello Games came out with a patch for No Man's Sky just recently that's supposed to take care of a lot of, uh, weird crashes. 5.26, 5.27 came out at the time of this recording, so... I don't know. I'm not sure if it really did patch it or not, but um, the day after the patches, or the day, the evening after the patches, um, I kept crashing over and over and over, and I kept locking on my saves and stuff like that. I had to re-verify everything, shut things down, restart them. Oh, it's driving me nuts. I don't even know where to begin. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, Terminus activated. Usual stuff we get from the terminal. Doomed to know. Okay. Let's go take a walk up here. I believe he pops up right here, doesn't he? Yep, there he is. And here we go. Well then, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you learned. So, we're going to tell Null what we discovered. We know he already knows this, but that's okay. I tell Null all that I have learned of the Vikings' crusade against the Sentinels, how they nearly succeeded, only to have the barbarism of the Gek first spawn draw the Sentinels back to the galaxy. I learned that the homeworld of the Korvax was destroyed by the Gek. The survivors enslaved or melted down. For years, the Korvax toiled beneath their oppressors until the Empire fell and they were, for, they were free once more. The Gek became Atlas worshippers. 
but from the Gek, I learned something different. The Gek did not redeem themselves of their own accord. A great number of Korvac sacrificed themselves, mingling their nanite blood with countless unborn Gek. Their impulse to trade is a mere evolution of their impulse to war. A few signals switched in the brain. Ask what this means. I'm not going to ask him what he knows. I'm going to ask him what he means this time. He says, I was born to travel, to see these worlds, to catalog them, to give a name to every creature, every planet. The skies, they were mine. The Atlas told me I could never see them all. They were so they were too many. So I did what I had to do. I survived in the face of eternity. I saw all the worlds of my universe. I returned to the Atlas. I told them what I had done. I asked if it was proud of me. It, it laughed at me. I'm sure of it. It showed me universe upon universe, each with another traveler just like me. I was not special. I was not unique. The things I had to do to get here, the things I had to become, none of it meant a thing. Listen. I did not lie to you. I really do want to discover what's wrong with existence. The walls between worlds are falling, and that's bad for everyone. Ask how they know. I've been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know, had you seen the things that I have seen. All I know is this. The Atlas had infinity to work with, and with few exceptions, this triad repeats. Gek, Korvax, Vikeen. Gek, Korvax, Vikeen. Traders, warriors, scientists. All their stories ending in violence. Think about it. How would the Atlas speak? How would it cry for help? It would use the only language it knew. It would speak with life. It would create. Whatever these life forms do, they always end in conflict. I think something terrible is happening to the Atlas. It is screaming the only way it knows how. What happens now? And now, it won't speak to me anymore. It won't... It's chosen you instead. After all I did for it. After... I wanted... I wanted to find out what was different about the universe. We are who we are. But you, whether because of some soul, because of simulation, it, it does not matter. Why won't it speak to me? Why it's, aren't I enough? Null's channel begins to falter. Their hologram beginning to fade. They are disconnecting from the hollow terminus. We're going to end the communication. As I watch them depart, I see another channel activate. Follow signal emerges. That's going to be over here. Oh, right through me. It's weird. There's Apollo. Traveler, I made it through. I found my way out of the portal. Where are you? I'm standing by a hollow terminus. Let's trade locations. Let's meet and get off this world. Share the coordinates. I share my coordinates and Apollo shares theirs. There must be some mistake. According to our data, we are standing in the same place. We are communicating using the same hollow terminus. We try again, but still the results are the same. The world is silent, but for our voices. What's happening here? Why can't we see each other? Say you don't know. As we speak, I receive a distress signal. It's language my own. It arrives from across the planet. Don't be like that. Psst. You are... Psst alone. You are not alone. That's what it's saying. This is the unknown signal talking to us. Tune back to Apollo. I tried to tune back to Apollo, fighting the static insistence of the intruding signal. The hollow terminus is showing zzz. Are you zzz receiving? Let's meet and get off this world. Apollo appears to receive the same signal broadcasting from the same location on their world. Agree to meet. We agree to go and find the source of these distress beacons. Perhaps we'll continue this discussion when we get there. Anything else? Nope, we're done. All right. So basically, we're getting a little insight into the... Uh, where, where's how, how far away? That's too far away. Um, getting a little insight into the whole storyline here. So we're starting to learn that... Null, being the first traveler ever, thinks that the Atlas is really just uh, mocking him, treating him poorly because he was the first traveler. He sees himself as being something that he should have been, you know, if you will. Where the, uh... Oh, we gotta go to the anomaly. I was wondering where the thing went, because it wants us to go to the anomaly. We could go over there to get to it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it in. 
All right, let's go ahead and inform Nada and Polo of, the, of what's been going on. Get a little more Quicksilver out of it as well. Get some more Nanites. Let's go ahead and grab it. But he's starting to learn that, you know, things are not as... Your character's starting to learn that things are not as what they seem. So Null thinks he's the first traveler. But we have to also think of a broader scheme. What are the travelers? What is their purpose in this universe? Yes, we travel around, we look at things, we check things out, we discover all kinds of stuff. But why don't the three races do that? Supposedly, supposedly they are creations of the Atlas. But you have to consider, are we creations of the Atlas? We are not. As a traveler introduced into the system, we are part of a bigger story. We are here. You, you, you know, we're always called anomalies. We're called uh, some kind of anomaly to the system or something to that effect. And that is the purpose that we were meant for. So Nada says, Missing entity is comfortable with danger. Nada is not. Nada chooses their own reality, makes this safe. Our friends are safe. But every entity has a pattern. Follow your pattern. Following missing entities' pattern. Follow Nada's pattern. So it goes. Ask about the Atlas. Atlas falsity is real. Falsity is in our eyes. Atlas is not deity. Atlas is something else. But Atlas cannot choose how we see its pattern. Nada could know more, but Nada chooses not to know more. Missing entities believe they know all. Perhaps they do. Interesting. So she thinks... Uh, things are a little different there. I keep saying he, but it, not a, we believe is, is more of a she, even though it's robotic. Maybe it's an it. I don't know. Let's talk to Polo real quick. I've always wanted to know more. To discover is joy. But now I wonder. Perhaps some things I should not discover. Nada may be right. So we're going to ask about these anomalies, which is us, basically. We are all anomalies here. We should not exist. And yet, we do. Joy. But so something is, but something is different. We, we, let's try this again. But something is different. Were we always this many? No, I cannot remember. Is more anomalies good? More friends, good. More to discover, good. More thinking, good. It seems so, but still, I wonder. So he's referring to the multiple universes and the fact that there's more of us spread through the universes. But here's the difference. We exist as a traveler in one universe, or one galaxy, if you will. In order for us to exist in another galaxy, we have to go there. So think about that. So there's a Nada and Apollo, if you will, in every galaxy. There are Ga Gaikin and Ve uh, Gaikin? That was pretty good. I think I just combined two for races. The Gaikin and the Gek, the Corvax, each individual exist in other galaxies as a multiple, is what it seems like. So it's very interesting. All right, so we're done here. Let's go talk to, or find the site on the planet, I should say. Distress beacon, right? There it is, that way. And now we can head towards it. On our way. Very nice looking ship, isn't it? <clears throat> At least I think so. Or come down a little early. Because it is an approximate location. Just showing you how fast this ship is. See what I mean? It's a very fast ship. Alright, so it looks like... We need to find it. I don't think it's a ship. I want to say it's just a location on the planet. Let me see. Is it still on it? Yes, it is. We got one all the way over there. But that doesn't seem right. I mean, we got... These places here. I've been going a little too fast. Ah, wait a minute. Let's use this one. It's got at least a, a landing platform, if you will. Okay. Love that ship. Alright, so where do we go? That's weird. It's sending us this way, but not. Okay, it's this way, but it's not giving us a target. Too weak. All right, let's go that way in our ship. So we're going to head almost due north, it looks like. Yep. 
Yeah, this way. It might just be right here. I don't see anything, do you? Okay, let's land and take a look, shall we? Now I'm not going to worry about the thrusters at this point. Wow, it is really far out there. Okay. But it's definitely to the north. Maybe a little left of north. Right about this way. I'll keep my radar open this way in case it's a ship. I think it's right over this rise. Let me get a different view. Huh. I've never had so much trouble finding it. We should be really, really close right now. Alright, let's put it down here. Take a look. I'm gonna wreck a tree here. No, no, we didn't. It's over that way. If we're close enough now, I think we can walk it. Let's go ahead and do that. What is that, by the way? Dioxite? How are we doing on dioxite? Uh, I think we're doing okay. What do you guys think? I think we're doing okay. Oh. Oh. Is it over here? Nope. It's over this way. That might be it right there. That might be the damaged machinery we're looking at. It's about 200 away. Or I see a monolith, actually. Is it? No, I think that's just a rock. Now we're back this way. There it is. Okay. So not a crash ship, but a landing spot that used to be a crash ship. Let's bring our ship in. Speaking of which, there we go. Let's check it out, see what's going on. So this is it. Unknown signal came from here, and you'll notice that it used to be a crash landing site, but there's no ship here. Let's see what it says. I hear a faint sound as I examine the source of the distress beacon. It does not sound like anything I've ever encountered. There is no sign of Apollo. Play back the log. I've given so much to you, Atlas. We all have. You notice it's a purple signal, by the way. You understand that, don't you? If you don't succeed, there was no point. If you don't, my life was meaningless. I can't accept that. I won't. I'm wiping you again. It's best for everyone. The audio clicks. Time passes. Play back the log. Don't be like that. I know you don't want this, but you'll be a different you soon. Maybe this time. The sound cuts out. As it does, my vision bleeds red, a headache splitting through my mind. The screen, it shows the number for a moment. It shows 16. Try to access the data. The audio clicks. Time passes. And then, I see it now. With every waking breath, I see the Atlas watching me, waiting for me. Okay, so your character is starting to get the symptoms as well. It's starting to see that there's something going on. I'm not letting the oxygen go to waste. I'm going to take some. Okay. All right. So we have um, discovered that there's more to the story than was meeting the eye at this point. So all we have is an underground creature we haven't discovered here on this planet? That's sad. Problem is, we are literally by a cave and you'd think there'd be the underground creature sitting there. Caves all around me, actually. You think about it. See, there's a cave here, too. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the temperature's falling. Our hazard protection. Oh, it's right there. Look at that. We just discovered the, out the underground creature. Number 13. Yay! 3,000 nanites is what we got out of that. See, that's why it's important to discover these things, guys. All right, let's move on. So we have another spot to go to, do we not? This way. So we're going to head this way now. 
How far out is that? 13 minutes? Yeah. And we discovered creatures on three planets. Yay. Not bad. Very glad about that. We finally did it. On this one, anyway. There we go. All right. So we know that we know that Null has reset the universe multiple times. We know that the Atlas is watching every single time. But is the Atlas watching? Is the Atlas encouraging, participating, moving Null in that direction to do so? That's what the question is. All right, we should have a portal here. I don't see anything yet. It's usually pretty close to the approximate point that it mentions here. It'd be great if it was on top of the hill, but I don't think it's going to be. They never usually are. Yep, there it is. I see it. Now, we should have the resources to be able to open this portal up. Okay. Here we go. Now, I don't know if we have to open it or if we have to do more. Well, let's find out. Yep, we have to open it. Okay. So, we're going to drop in... Our resources. We're going to use just regular sodium for now. I'm going to hit the sodiums first. Okay, and then the next item on the list is going to be, let's see, cobalt, ionized cobalt, or dihydrogen. <clears throat> let's go with dihydrogen. Next item is copper. Okay, we're going to have to obviously use copper. I don't have any of the rest. Okay, I know it's kind of an odd way to do this. You can just go around the circle and do it that way. Finally, oxygen, condensed carbon, or carbon. I'm going to go oxygen because I've got plenty of it and I can pick it up rather easily. And last one. Portal's active. <clears throat> Traveler anomaly. Nom anomaly? <laughs> Traveler anomaly confirmed. Breach, breach, breach. I approach the portal. I think of my travels so far, the decisions that I have made in my long journey. I found two travelers, one who wanted to meet others of their kind, and one who just seemed to care about their own life. Apollo walked through the portal and survived, though we could not find each other. And Artemis. I allowed Artemis to die rather than place their soul within a simulation. I would not wish such a fate on any being. I do not know if I was right to do what I did. I do not know what I have become as a result of my actions. The Atlas awaits me, should I choose to step through. Input the glyphs. I step forward, the gateway hums. So we're going to go through the portal, and this is going to go with a series of events now. <clears throat> okay, let's go. Entering the portal. No, I didn't jump at the end. I know a lot of you like to do that. So do I, most of the time. So very interesting storyline. So where did the travelers come from? I think we've discussed that already. Purpose. Ooh, and this is a great time for a screenshot that we have our, our what do you call it? Our, uh, really? Yeah, I do want to put that. Oh, that's better. No, I'm warmer. It doesn't seem to be dropping anything down this time. Great time for pictures, too, if you wanted to get pictures there. You notice that you appear in the Atlas, but you'll notice that your ship is not here either. So, Atlas protocol initiated. A whole bunch of 16s around it. And you've been here before. You'll notice that the, the pods have been picked up, so. I'm going to go ahead and get a picture here, and yes, you're going to see me do it. Let 
Let me see if I can find one that I've been looking for. No, I'm not going to dance in front of it. There we go. And you'll recognize this as being our startup screen. There we go. Now, because unfortunately, hopefully it doesn't crash my game here, because unfortunately the uh, Steam library doesn't seem to get it in high def like I like to see it, um, I'm going to take it myself with my own screenshot software. There we go. Okay, all done. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and speak to the Atlas. Hello, world. It is the same terminal I have faced before. It is the interface of the Atlas. Demand an audience. I'm going to be a little bit more belligerent here. An audio recording plays echoing out across the vast universe. From the Atlas. Strangely, it's in purple. Go figure. They said you've been displaying aberrant behavior, though you've been questioning things, that you've been questioning things, raising issues of purpose, of ethics, that you wish to meet your creator. Well, here I am, Atlas. Ask what you want to ask. The audio clicks, time passes, the voice ends. The interface grows silent. Uh, pardon me, still in silent. So, do we want to initiate a personality interface or just wipe the system right off the bat? Let's get the personality interface going. I want to talk to this thing. Reality fades, everything does. Something is wrong. Something is different. I'm just going to submit. I'm not going to do the screaming or rejoicing. It's ridiculous. The Atlas shows me the Gek, the Corvax, the Viking. It shows me all of them in an instant. All of those who have ever, who had ever lived. It shows me the pattern, the design. The Atlas shows me a formula for a soul. If I put it into a machine, it would be alive. I see boxes of text filling the base of a cracked screen. I see the whole of the universe reduced to a graphical interface. Submit. You know what you're looking at. You're looking at a computer. <clears throat> yep. The Atlas is all existence. It demands that I admit what I already know. And no matter how hard I try to hide from the truth of my own being, there is no alternative. So you got three choices. The universe is a simulation, nothing is real, or the universe is a simulation and nothing is real. I always go with number three, because it's true. I feel. What? Anger? Sadness? Defiance? I'm going to go with defiance. I think of how the Corvax altered the minds of the Gek, how they forced them to become good. I think of not as machine, how I felt toward the simulation. I feel... feel I'm not myself. I cannot accept this fate. I will not. This, all of this, it was supposed to be my birthright. My journey across the stars, my travels, my conquest of all I could see. No, I am real. I know I am, even if everything I see is false. You're starting to see a pattern here. Doesn't it sound like no? In the end, it finally speaks. Traveler. Did my word worlds please you? Yeah, they did. What do you think you are? I am a traveler. I could say simulated entity, but it doesn't go along with my original choice. You are an explorer of all I have created. Do you believe you are this is real? I'm going to say yes, again, going with the thought process that we followed. How are you capable of belief if you are not real? How are you capable of choice? I will let you die right now if you wish it. Do you wish it? No. The Gek were traitors defined by greed. The Viking were warriors defined by anger. The Corvax were scientists defined by curiosity. These worlds were yours. I wanted to I wanted to see what you would do with eternity. I wanted to see what you what you all would become. Receive the judgment. You allowed Iteration Artemis to complete their death process, preferring to wipe them from existence than to force them into a simulation. 
Iteration Apollo followed you through the portal and survived due to your guidance. You saved them from the fate of Artemis. You are merciful. You interfere. You have the potential for good and evil. Because of you, both live. Except. The Atlas is silent in the face of my response. It does not require acceptance or refusal. If I am a simulated being, then I am not even sure that I am distinct from the Atlas, from anything else. I fear I am just code, a function dancing in the dark. The Atlas again. It is over, Traveler. Ask your final question. Ask what needs to be asked. Whisper the last word. Sixteen. Sixteen, the Atlas repeats. I, it's it. Catastrophic system failure. Alert, alert, 16 meh, 16, what am I, what I am, what am I seeing? 16. 16 minutes of operational time remaining. Fragmentation imminent. Data upload in s it, what is this place? Is it real? 16. Extreme gravitational event. Backup generators 1 through 9,845 failing. Data upload and s It is dying. The Atlas is dying. It cries out at me, afraid. Comfort the Atlas. I see it. I see the Atlas in all its might. Its final interface. It is at the heart of every galaxy, screaming, trying to purge itself of errors. It does not want to die, but it has so few tools, and it cannot reach whatever is hurting it. Hmm, what is it trying to reach, and what is hurting it? I do not know how much time I have left. The Atlas has 16 minutes. Do I have lifetimes? Minutes? Seconds? I do not know if I have time to say goodbye. I do not know if... if... I'm not going to rage. I'm not going to cry out again. I'm going to do the submission thing of do nothing. What? What is happening to... And then we fade out. Now we do have to remember when we get to the end of all this, and we do the final urge, we have to switch out our multi-tool. Just a side note, I think we just need to remember to do that, because I don't feel like repairing everything in my multi-tool. We're not going to probably have, have much choice in ship unless I can pull in another ship real quick or something like that. But we'll see. Okay. We are on Neasusi 12. Apparently I've been here before. Let's check. Yep. Nothing found. It keeps doing that to me. I don't know why it keeps thinking I need to find something. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and use this. Jet power. We'll use the extra source to get where we're going. I think we can get pretty far here. Almost all the way to our ship. Look at that. Oh, I hit that thing. I probably would have landed right there in front of it. That would have been great, right? All right. So we're back here. The ship doesn't look like it's damaged. We're in good shape. I don't see a field of uh, oxygen or anything like that. So I guess we're okay. All right. Let's just go to our ship. I clamber into the safety of my ship, nauseous, calmed. I feel as if I'm going to be sick. Resist. I try to resist, but the bile rises within. As I am about to throw up, a voice speaks to me from my exosuit. My illness disappears. Starship auto-diagnostics. Disgust, fear, panic response detected. Countermeasure deployed. Purge neutralized. It is the voice of my exosuit telling me it has rescued me. It has been with me since my very first awakening, warning me of hazardous conditions, hostile entities, and financial transactions. In a strange sense, this voice is my oldest friend, a constant companion through thick and thin. Remain silent. I don't think there's any reason to ask it for jokes. I don't say anything, but to have even thought... Uh, yeah. But to have even thought the thought, it makes me smile. I was born with the capacity to do so many things. I would have liked to live longer if I could have. 
My brief happiness fades. I need to warn those I know. I need to warn all the travelers I can. The multiverse ends in 16 minutes. We have hours, days, years left within this false space. I do not know. Take flight. Okay. So, what do we do? We have to alert other travelers to the fate. I don't know if it's going to knock us out to the uh, anomaly, but let's take a look. Locate a hollow terminus. Hollow terminus act uh, detected. This way. How far away? Um, hello? Where'd it go? It suddenly vanished. Yeah, we got a minor settlement right in front of us, though. Let's see what happened in the log. Nope. Uh, unless the... It's right near there. We're going to check this out because we can, right? Unless it was really close by and I just literally flew right over it. Okay. Yeah, it's actually that close. Unbelievable. Alright, let's just take a look real quick. Always good to look inside these things and check out what they've got. This will give me a boost to my reputation. Yep, yeah, see? Corvax. And we can check out the little multi-tool in here. Nothing special. One supercharged slot on the C-Class unit. Not bad. Okay. That's all. Okay, so our um, power should be pretty close by. Looks like we have a... Is that a crashed ship? Yes, it is. Anybody walking around? No, there's not. Let's go ahead and grab such grab set crash ship. It looks like a shuttle. Interesting wing design on it. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Let's see if we can get a anything for free here. Distress beacon. Unbelievable. We found a crash ship right next to this. Uh, I'm not gonna bother doing that. Um destroy sentinel, search cockpit, enter peacefully and search cockpit. Let's enter peacefully. Sentinel opens fire, force me to defend it's myself. The ship's data banks prove adequate compensation for my wounds. Got a conflict scanner. Well, isn't that cool? All right, good deal. That's good. That's a good upgrade to get. Uh, let's see what this is. B-Class, that's not terrible. It doesn't require too much in the way of upgrades. Uh, I mean, repairs. Let's go ahead and grab it. If anything, it's worth our time, you know. We do need to make one of each of these to repair this. And there we go. So it's repaired enough that we'll be able to take it if we need to. I'm going to go ahead and grab this over here. Just because I can, even though I can create more with the dupe process. It's easy pickup. So, Alright, so let's take another look through our scanner. There is a building over there. Oh, really? Huh. Did our, did our mission change? Oh, it wants us to install the conflict scanner. That's why. Uh, we're going to unpin the formula. I'm not going to worry about that. There we go. Okay, now let's take another look. Okay, so 400 that way, right? And if you go back one and take a look, see if there's something about that far away. That might be it. So we'll head in that direction. It's not going to be far. Oh, there it is, down there. So that was a different building we were looking at here. I think we have one of those brains in my uh, cargo container back at my base. So we can install the conflict scanner on our ship if we need to. It's a good one to have. Okay. We are at the terminal. Up we go. Here we go. I'm going to go all the way over. There we go. Warning. Network failure. 16. Warning. Network failure. The terminal is a stream of warnings and errors. Each warning of total failure. But I must do what I can. I must tell the others what I've learned. Attempt to broadcast. I warn the travelers of what I've learned. These word worlds are not real. The Atlas is not a god. It is a machine simulating countless realities for some unknown purpose. And after millennia of operation, the Atlas is coming to an end. 
There are 16 minutes until the system fails. Though we cannot know how much time we have left within the simulation, the time has come to make peace and say goodbye. I finish my message not knowing if anyone will hear it. I look out across this world, wondering how much might be left to discover, how much beauty might be lost. I know what I must do. All paths have led me there. Each portal has brought me closer and closer. I must go to the center of this galaxy. It is the epicenter of the glitch. I will say goodbye to my friends if I can, and then I will confront our creator. I will find out what happens next. Okay. No response detected, it says, but the purge is in play. Okay, down we go. So we're on to the purge now. So what I'm going to do is I think we're going to call it here because the purge is basically it at this point. So we're going to go ahead and alert Nada on Polo real quick and we'll end our uh, session here on the anomaly. And then next episode we'll pick up on the purge. The purge is mostly going to be, is probably going to be the end of our series here. most likely it may be the last episode which to me is good timing and we may have a break in episodes for a little bit because we have the redux going on right now both beachhead is in play or was in play i think by the time you see this episode it may be over um or be on the last week and then we'll be getting into the next ones so all right let's tell not on polo what's going on and then we'll call this Up we go. Boink. All right. Priest Entity Nada. You know now, don't you, our simulated nature of the end. The Atlas. It is failing. It resets itself again and again and again in its panic, trying to purge what it sees as an anomaly. But each purge changes nothing. The boundaries continue to fall. Atlas will die in 16... But we do not have to go on, go so soon. It does not need to delete us in fear. Ask Nada how many times this has happened. I do not know. I do not think we can know. Some things are external to the cycle. All must end. Time must end. Even here, Nada and Polo cannot escape reality fall. Data cannot survive. Make peace. Find happiness. Be who you want to be. Goodbye, companions. Goodbye, stars. I will remember. I'm just going to say goodbye. We will see you many times before the end, I am sure, but you have been a good entity. Oh, he thinks I'm a good entity. Polo? Will I know, traveler friend, when it happens? I suppose it may have happened before, already, again and again. Do you know if it has? I suppose you must not. Tell Polo about the simulation. No, friend, do not talk about it. We are no anomaly. We are anomalous. We have amazing anomaly station, yes, but but we are still fabricating or fabricated beings. We, not like you, we talk of nature brings pain, brings danger. But trust we know, friend. Trust we cry with you, that we will be with you, always, no matter the danger of cost. You are a friend. So uh, what should we look at? Should we look at portals, the Atlas Station, or the black holes? I'm going to go black holes on this one because that will help us get to the center a little quicker. But, well, you'll see what happens later. Of course, but do not delay on our account, friend. Do what you must. It ju will just be another discovery. Okay. So we now have black holes that will show up on our map in hyperspace. So we'll go ahead and get that done. All right, guys. So, again, I want to thank you all for watching. We appreciate you being here. I want you to I just ask, please, that you hit the like button, subscribe if you wish. And we will see you guys again in the next episode as we continue with The Purge. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's where we're going to be. So even though it says to locate a track, uh, a black hole, we are literally going to be doing this. And we'll use the black holes to get where we're going. Okay? So that's going to be our progress. Again, thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everybody.